By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in today's episode, you are going to see me play again. I know it's been a while, but I still play magic. And in this episode, I'm taking on Dan, and Dan is one of my patrons. And he is bringing a zoo deck to the table, like a classic zoo deck. And I am battling that deck with my mono blue Timmy's Spellbook. And I'm kind of looking forward to this match because it's always good to practice, um, you know, my deck against different deck types. And, and this aggro deck seems like quite a challenge. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, before I start with the deck techs, I would like to point out that in the description below, you can find a timestamp that reads MTG Games. If you click on that timestamp, that will take you straight to the actual games. Um, so if you want to skip the deck tech, that is what you can do. For here, we are going to start with the deck tech. I'm going to start with my own deck, Timmy's Spellbook. And here we see my mono blue deck, Timmy's Spellbook. And what I want to do with this deck, I guess it's really classical blue. I want to control the board with my counter spells, right? So my four counter spells and my one mana drain. And of course, my three icy manipulators as well. And my two control magic. So what I want to do at, at the start of this game, I'm probably not going to do too much. I'm just going to play out my lands, making sure I've got a counter spell open or a threat of a counter spell open. And the nice thing about this deck is... If my opponent is able to play a creature, it's actually not that bad because I've got two side blasts to you know kill your Sarah Angels and, and other creatures that are that are four four saying your vampires or smaller creatures. I've got my Timmies to kill creatures with a toughness one or two, you know, because usually I'm able to get two Timmies, sometimes even three Timmies on the board, because I'm playing with a full playset of them, and I'm playing with a pirate ship, and I'm playing with a clone. So there are a lot of Timmy possibilities in my deck. And I'm also playing with two control magics, of course. So if I'm able to play a control magic and have a counter spell as a backup to protect my control magic, that's actually one of my favorite things to do because control magic is a two for one. Your opponent loses a creature and you gain a creature. It's great. But of course, the problem with control magic is it's an enchantment. It's on the board. If you're playing against white, you know, that's always difficult. White can play a disenchant on that and your opponent gets the creature back. Right, but if you can protect it with a, with a counter spell, it's all good. And um, the story of this deck is a little bit that it is a little of everything. It is not full control. It is not um, you know trying to wait like the deckish. I'm, I want to have card advantage and then kill my opponent with a giant fireball or with one single creature or with Mishra's factories. Uh, there are also fatties in this deck. You know, there's Mahamoti Jin. There are two air elementals with the time walk. If I time that right, I can have a double combat phase, and I can just deal tons and tons of damage at the right moment. I'm also playing with two City in a Bottle's main, and I have to say that's really been great. I mean, City in a Bottle, of course, it's it's perfect against Surrender Pafrids, Urnum Jins. You know, you, you name it. There are a lot of powerful creatures. In Arabian Nights, but it's also extremely useful against Library of Alexandria and against those City of Brasses. A lot of old school players and a lot of uh, decks in old school they play with kind of a weak mana base, and and they know it. They know it. It's a price you pay, and usually when you have power, you've got all the mocks and you've got your Black Lotus. You can get away with it. But the nice thing about the City in the Bottle is it also takes care of um, that City of Brass of your opponent. So. Sometimes my Sydney in the bottle can be so annoying for my opponent that they're that they're really stuck. And when they're stuck, it's ideal for me because it gives me uh, it gives me the advantage, and I can kind of build out from that because I really want to build from a control position, right? Um, what I love to do, of course, with this deck is get just a bunch of Timmy's out, control the board, and just ping my opponent really slowly and slowly, slowly ping him to death. You know, that's one of the things that I enjoy. Although I have to admit, swinging in with a Mahamoti. That's just priceless, you know. That's 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 just a fantastic feeling. Anyway, uh, this is the deck. Maybe a small uh, side note. One of the recent changes that I've made with this deck is I've added two Nevenerals disc in the sideboard, and together with those two ghost ships in my sideboard, I can decide to board that in, having four ghost ships and two Nevenerals discs. Possibly also got my Hercules recall in, and that way I'm just putting some some synergy, a little not troll disco, but disco boat element uh in my mono blue deck and that's been that's been working quite well in specific matchups the, the the problem is when you're playing mono blue is that you don't have answers to a lot of things so if you can't counter them you can counter everything but if you don't have a counter spell and every match 
a few things slip and your opponent's able to play a few things out that you really don't want to see and you haven't been able to counter them, well, it's really great to just have that safety switch in your deck somewhere, that Nevenerals disc that can still blow up everything. Um, so let's see, let's see if I need it, if I need to board it in in this match. Um, let's take a look at the deck of my opponent, the Zoo deck from Dan. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Dan. So this is your typical Zoo deck. And I like it because Zoo is such a classical uh, old school deck, right? If, if you've been playing Magic for a long time, you're familiar with the term Zoo. Uh, for the people that are not, I'm just going to do a, a short little deck deck. So Zoo is usually also these colors. So as you can see, it's blue, red, and green. And the idea of Zoo is that you want to play mana efficient creatures. So of course, Curdape can be a fantastic mana efficient creature. It's red uh, for a 1-1 one, one, and it can potentially become a 2-3. If you've got, of course, a Taiga or a Forest, you know, it gets that bonus. So that makes it a very strong creature. And also uh, you see the Pixies, which is a 2-1. Now Argovian Pixies is a creature that you didn't see as much in you know the early days of magic but in old school today it is a creature that you see more and more often why because of course the mishra's factory that's why so we see two of those and we also see four surrender Ifrits and three urnum gins so basically what you want to do is you want to play small creatures with great stats and then you want to have mana left to kind of burn out your opponent so we see double cyblast double chain lightning four lightning bolts we see fireball we see disintegrate we also see Bloodlusts, two of them, and two Berserks. So this can get really brutal really quickly for me. I need to be able to counter these things. Um, talking about counter magic, there is a little counter magic in this list of Dan with a double counter spell. But you can see that he's really chosen to go for the aggro plan instead of going, um, you know, for the uh, control plan. You know, really saying, you know what, I have one plan that's just to kill my opponent ASAP. And I'm not going to bother maybe i'm going to keep a counter spell back for when i'm deciding to put my bloodlust and my berserk on one creature like go all in on one fatty and then i want to have to counter spell to kind of protect it from any shenanigans which i think is actually a pretty solid plan right and of course there's one real problem with this strategy by dan at least for the first match because i'm playing a double city in a bottle main as we could see and if i can get that on the table it's going to be really hard for dan to win of course he still has his full burn package which can be very efficient but creature wise it will be very challenging for him but hey i'm only playing with two of those so maybe we won't even see them for the whole matchup now if we look at the sideboards another good thing which which is going to to work out really well for for dan i think is um that red elemental blast now he's only playing with two of them but red elemental blast of course is an absolute killer against my deck i'm mono blue you know <laughs> I am super vulnerable to Red Elemental Blast. It's something that I'm constantly uh, playing against when I'm taking this deck to a tournament. Um, which has been a while, by the way. You know, 2020, man. What a bad year. Anyway, uh, this is Dan's deck. Uh, Dan, thank you for bringing this to the channel. I'm looking forward to playing against it. Talking about playing against it. Let's go to the match. Game number one. And I'm sitting on the left. My opponent, Dan, is sitting on the right with the Counterspell playmat. And let's take a look. Oh, Library of Alexandria for my opponent here. That is pretty rough here. Basic Island for me past turn. And that means that Dan can start picking up extra cards here. Interestingly, choosing to play a Sylvan. Actually, that makes sense in a way as well, because he can draw back to seven. So is he going to draw extra cards? It looks like he forgot to activate the Sylvan here. And that means that he's kind of going off the Loa plan. That is interesting. Maybe we're discussing it anyway. We're passing here. I think he, met, he realized he forgot and just passed turn. So that's uh, very lucky for me here playing a Soul Ring. And of course, keeping two blue open. And now he remembers the uh, the Sylvan. Probably going to draw an extra card, right? So he's back up to seven. And actually, it looks like he's not doing that. Interesting. Choosing to go for the aggro plan here. And playing the Surrender, a free 3-4 flyer. And there's no counter spell. So that means that it will be some damage for me, or do I have something to deal with the Deserendip? 
Tapping four, and there's an icy manipulator passing turn here. So that means a damage for Dan because of the Serenip. First going to look at his cards with the Sylvan. And playing a land here. So it's very interesting so far, the strategy from Dan. He hasn't... I'm taking three damage here because I want to keep my counter spell up. Um, he hasn't used the Library of Alexandria even once. And let's see what he's going to do now. When I saw that Loa turn one, I was kind of like, uh-oh, it's going to be one of those games. But looks like he's not really using it. And now he has to draw a lot of extra cards. Let's see what I'm going to do. Tapping three here and playing a Prodigal Sorcerer, playing a Timmy. Got to laugh a little because it's the altar made by Lady Death Touch from the Desert Twisters, an old school play group over in Arizona, the States. And um, tapping down here, the Serenity of Freet. And there's the Urnum Jin, so a lot of aggression. And am I going to counter this? Looking at my two blue lands, it looks like I am, but... Or am I not? Maybe I have, like, a Control Magic in hand, or even worse, for my opponent finding a city in a bottle. That would be absolutely devastating. Let's see what I'm going to do. Deciding to tap four, will there be? Yes, there's a control magic. So actually taking over that Urnum does mean that I cannot counter next turn. But it looks like I have some control now. And now he's getting some extra cards and that means he can activate the Library of Alexandria and now he gets that party started. So drawing an extra card, I think that's a very good decision. Does mean he's gonna drop 13 though. Tapping, there's an Argovian Pixies. I can actually ping that one with my Timmy. And in response, there is that Lightning Bolt, but the damage is dealt nonetheless. So perhaps it would have been better for Dan to first play the Bolt and then play the Pixies. And now I've got to give Forest Walk, of course, to his Surrender Befreet and attack here for four. He's going to drop to nine, playing another Timmy. And he has to take damage again. Gonna drop to eight here. First looking at the cards for the Sylvan. Drawing for turn. And drawing an extra card here from the top. So it's going to eight cards again. Taking a damage from that Serenum. Going to eight. He needs something to deal with the four or five Forest Walker. There is another Serenum Afrit. But there is a counter spell here. An interesting choice here that counter spell I could have just let it resolve because then Dan would take uh, two damage next turn but of course he would double block on my Urnum so that's probably why I decided to counter it and there's a clone over the Urnum Jin so two four five attackers I mean things are looking very bleak here for Dan he needs a small miracle to get back from this looking at his first three putting them back what is he going to do Choosing to draw, and then he draws from the Sylvan. Or just from the draw step, I mean. Tapping down the Serendip, and there's a Kurt Ape. Kurt Ape gets the bonus because of the Taiga and another Kurt Ape. So, I mean, I, I, I like this. He's, he's, he's putting, putting up a fight, so I'm going to bring him to two here. And... Let's see, playing another Icy, so it's already over. I can block both of his Kurt Apes, and then I can finish this game number one. I think, oh, look at that. He had Channel Disintegrate, but he just was down on life the whole game. And I just really think that, um, yeah, that he was a little bit unfortunate with uh, with that Library of Alexandria. And he, he made, he obviously, he made a few minor errors. And then before you know it, you're, you're behind playing against uh, against my deck. So this was an interesting game one, and now we're both going to go to our sideboards, and we'll catch back up with both of these players in game number two. Game number two is about to start, and 
Let's see what Dan can do here. There is a Kurt Ape turn one. That is pretty solid. If he has a forest next turn, he can make it into a 2-3. There's a Tropical Island. So now he can swing in. I'm going down to 18. What else can he do here? Ancestral Recall. Okay, this is looking like a pretty good game here for Dan. Let's see if he can put some more pressure on the board. It looks like he, he can be passing turn, but I'm sure next turn we'll see a Surrendip. Or will we? Oh, City in a Bottle. This is brutal. And it looked like such a good start here for my opponent, Dan. And this City in a Bottle is really going to be difficult because he cannot play out his Surrender Befreeds, he cannot play out his Urnum Jins, he cannot play out his Kurt Ape. So the only creatures he's got left are Argovian Pixies. Now he does play with Shatter, so he has some abilities here to get rid of the City in a Bottle, but of course he has to have them in hand. It looks like he doesn't just passing turn here. And I'm playing a Mishra's Factory. Looks like I want to play something, changing my mind here, passing turn. Probably want to keep my counter magic up to protect my city in the bottom. And look at that. Ah, that's kind of disgusting, Dan. I'm sorry. Yes, did um, this card is City of Brass because of that city in a bottle. And here we see a Chaos Orb to make matters worse. And there is a strip mine. And in his end step, I'm actually deciding to go and flip on the volcanic island. Okay, I guess I'm not. Yes, I am. Uh, I remember this play because I want to take care of his... Okay, there's a lightning bolt to the face here. I want to take care of his red mana source so that he can play out his um, shatter. So here, I've put it in slow-mo. There we go. Boom. Boom. I think it's not a hit. Is it? No, I just missed it. Barely missed it. Ay, 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 ay. I think it's good for the game, but it's bad news for me. And um, let me know it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of that play. It was a little bit risky because when I activated my orb, taking it for two, by the way. But there's the strip mine activation. Um, what I wanted to say is when I activated my orb, I didn't have two blue open anymore. So if he had a shatter at that moment, he could have destroyed my my um, city in a bottle. And here we see. An icy manipulator and in his upkeep i'm going to tap down his red source and he's going to play another lightning bolt i am down to 12 already so even though i've got control here of the game um, i'm not really putting any pressure on the board again just passing turn tapping down his volcanic so i'm kind of digging now for my air elementals there's a time warp quite nice maybe dan can find something untapping the volcanic and there is a Mox Ruby, so he's got enough red sources now, so I can no longer manipulate that. Let's see if he can play out that Shatter, or at least like an Argovian Pixies, or put some pressure on the board. I've got four cards in hand still, and enough mana to play a Counterspell. But I think when you're Dan, you now just have to take that risk. If you have something, of course. And he's passing turn here, finding another island. It looks like I'm kind of stuck here. So despite the fact that I have that awesome city in a bottle that does so much work for me, I'm unable to put any pressure on the board. And now he plays a regrowth. Ah, look at that. Made a little mistake there with tapping the lands. If he would have done Tropical Isle of Mox Ruby and then used his Tropical Island to play the Ancestral, you know, he would have been able to cast it straight away. Now he has to wait a turn. It looks like it doesn't have a lot of impact though. And I just keep tapping down one of the lands, because what else can I do? And uh, I mean, I'm playing with quite a lot of creatures in the deck, so it's pretty surprising that I'm not uh, drawing one. But you know, sometimes you have those games where it doesn't happen. There we see the Ancestral Recall, and now he just has to discard tons of Arabian Night cards here. Look at that, discarding three cards, drawing three, but having to discard three. But they're all Arabian Nights, so he's not really going to miss them that much. And I have to be honest here, this is not a very interesting game. And um, there is a Psyblast going to 8. I mean, he's slowly killing me on direct damage. I'm not even countering this one, so I don't even have a counter spell in hand, or maybe I don't want to yet. But I mean, I'm on 8. Two more Psyblasts, and we're done. There's a Fireball for 2, go to 6. Still no counter spell. And maybe I'm deciding I don't want to counter a two direct damage card. Maybe I want to go for like a bolt. There's a chain lightning. Will we see a counter spell finally? Okay, there's a blue elemental blast from the site. Red elemental blast. Oh, oh going to three. I think Dan's going to win this one. 
purely on direct damage and purely because I don't uh, draw into any gas. This is kind of a silly game here. But great, at least for Dan, and maybe good for the match as well. Will we see Disintegrate? Oh, look at my hand. Oh, that's so worthless. That's so worthless. I had Library of Alexandria I couldn't play. I had tons of control magics, which go horribly with City in a Bottle. So I kind of made uh, the, the game very difficult for myself. I probably assumed when I played the City in a Bottle that I would draw into some creatures. You know, I'm playing double air elemental, Mahamoti, of course, four Timmies. Uh, and a lot of other stuff, ghost ships, what else? But I just wasn't able to find any and put pressure on the board. So I gave my opponent all the time in the world that he needed to actually burn me to death. So uh, Dan, well done with surviving that city in a bottle. Great job. Um, I'm going to look at my sideboard again. Maybe I have to drop a control magic or two and um, or the city in a bottle and go for the control magic strategy because my opponent doesn't play with white so he doesn't have access to disenchants anyway a lot of options here so i'm gonna go in the tank and we'll catch back up with you in game uh, number three game uh, number three so this is the decider who is going to win this match will it be timmy spellbook or the zoo deck let's see i get to play i guess since i lost the last game Looking at my hand, if I want to keep it, yes or no. Looks like I do, playing an island here and passing turn. And my opponent starting off with a soul ring, double mox. This is a pretty explosive start. Does he have a surrender as well? He does not, so I'm pretty lucky with that, I guess. Deciding to tap out here to play a copy artifact. This is always kind of tricky. And there is a red elemental blast. I want to say tricky because I'm not sure what artifact I, I'm choosing here. But the Red Elemental Blast is helping us a little bit. And of course, I'm tapped out now, so I'm unable to counter the Surrender Befreed. So that hits the board to 3-4 Creature. And attacking here for 3, so that means I'm going... Yeah, he's taking a damage, going to 19. I'm going to drop to 17. There is a City of Brass. And it looked, looked like I wanted to play something out, but I changed my mind. There is a Ghost Ship, and Ghost Ship is quite a good blocker for that Surrender. It's a 2-4 Flyer, and of course that works great against the 3-4 Flyer of Dan here. Going to 18 because of his Surrender. Attacking... I'm actually not blocking, probably afraid of a Lightning Bolt, so deciding to go to 14 here. And I'm actually attacking Dan now, this is interesting. Oh, I have a Mesa Viv. Okay, that kind of explains it. So I'm really treating life here as a resource, but I have to be careful because my opponent is playing with a lot of direct damage. We saw that in game number two. He's got chains, he's got bolts. So it's definitely a problem. And here we see a Psyblast. Interesting choice to Psyblast his Surrender. I don't really understand why I'm doing that, to be honest, because I have that maze on the board. Perhaps because I want to push through the damage with the pirate ship. I want to... Get a lot of pressure on the board to make sure that I can kill my opponent before my opponent can kill me with the direct damage cards. And there is a side blast. Am I able to counter? I'm not able to counter. Gonna drop to eight. Oh my, this is not looking great. Blue elemental blast, at least on the lightning bolt. That's something. And look how quickly that goes with those side blasts. They're just so powerful. And also the problem for me is because I'm playing side blasts too. If I'm low enough. I'm not going to play my side blasts out anymore. And here we see a surrender for Dan. There's another island. Dan's on nine. I'm on eight. We're very close together here. There is. Okay, this is good news actually. That icy manipulator. I could have used it the same turn, tapping down a surrender, get two extra damage, and chose not to. And now I'm not using it end step. So that's definitely a miss. On my part here, a bit of sloppy magic. Because I could have tapped him before, so that is not great. Anyway, I'm dealing damage, going down to 6, going down to 5 because of his own Surrender. And of course, this is a big downside of the Surrender Befreet. I'm still on 8 here. Tapping him down again, attacking with the Ghost Ship. Putting him on 3. Oh, and he's trying to kill the ghost ship i'm protecting it here i could have also chosen to regenerate it i believe because it just destroys it and then i would have still had my blue elemental blast so again i kind of feel like this is not the best play on my side on the other hand maybe i have a counter spell 
in my hand that I want to keep? Okay, I guess I don't. <laughs> Playing an icy manipulator here. So there is a curd ape. And I'm tapping down his city of brass so that he goes to three. And then I'm going to tap down his surrender per freed. And I can attack him for two. He's going to go to one. And then next turn, it should be pretty much over. Playing a Timmy here. But it still has summoning sickness, so I cannot win with my Tim. And it looks like the Serenip is going to kill him. Look at that. He would have pulled a Disintegrate, and that would have given him the win, actually. <laughs> oh, sorry. Man, I'm really lucky here. Um, I just, I really feel, now looking back at this, I made a few mistakes, especially protecting my uh, ghost ship with that blue elemental blast i could have just regenerated it keep my blue elemental blast on hand to for example counter that disintegrate if dan would have pulled that disintegrate one turn early he would have won this matchup so thank you very much dan uh for this game i really enjoyed playing your deck looking forward to play some more games in the future um i would also like to thank all of you for watching another episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic um, yeah, just please be a little bit forgiving on the, on the, on the play, play errors from both of us. We were playing pretty casually in this one. Um, and what else do I want to say? Oh yeah, of course you can support the channel and how can you do that? It's pretty simple. You can like this video, uh, leave a comment, share this on your socials if you've enjoyed this. And also you can be, uh, subscribe. You can of course subscribe to the channel as well. If you're not a sub yet, we're currently around 2000 subs. So it's always great to get more and uh, YouTube really, really appreciates that uh, in, in, in deciding where to rank um, my videos on their platform. So it's really appreciated if you become a sub that helps out a lot. And what you can also do is you can support the channel financially. So if you like what you see and if you like Timmy Talks to continue to help me doing what I'm doing, uh, then you can support the channel financially and you can check that option out on Patreon. So how you can become a patron of Timmy Talks. Talking about the patrons, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken Santa?